And Yusuf salam was an absolute exception, a very unique child. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, All the beauty Allah has placed in this world, Allah gave half to just Yusuf. Must have been an educated wolf, Masha, who can strip Yusuf first before eating him up. Uh, the wealthiest man in Egypt, there was Yusuf struggling in the village, now he's living in a palace. My dear brothers and elders, we begin in the name of Allah and thank Him and praise Him and glorify Him. We seek His forgiveness and we ask Allah to enlighten our hearts with His love, love for His beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to guide us all to the right path so that we can all live like Muslims, die like Muslims and rise like Muslims on the day of Qiyamah. Today we want to talk about Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam because Allah has mentioned in the Quran and that his story is the best of the stories. Quran is a book of guidance. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Quran is the only book in which there is absolutely no doubt whatsoever. Allah has sent it as guidance generally for the whole of mankind but only those with taqwa really and truly benefit from it. Some people just need simple instructions and be told what to do and mashallah they listen and they obey and they get on with what needs to be done. Other people need some more encouragement, some persuasion. They need to be shown. Some people need to be held by the hand and made to walk. We all have our limitations and setbacks and we all have our shortcomings. Allah is Rabbul Alameen. He knows every one of us. He knows what we are all about because He's created us. And generally, people need examples. And Allah has stated in the Quran, وَكُلَّنَّ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ All these different stories of my beloved Prophet that I'm telling you about, and they are all there to affirm you. When we hear stories, examples, it makes things easy. This is why those of us who've been to schools, and I think most of us have been to schools, when we get taught a concept, then we are given examples. Examples help to understand the situation and concept better, make things easy. Allah has given many examples in the Quran. In fact, one of the things that the Kuffar used to criticize Quran and Rasulullah about was that look at in the Quran, why does Allah give so many different examples of mosquitoes and other things? Allah says, it doesn't embarrass Allah to give examples. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَسْتَحْيِي أَنْ يَضْرِبَ مَثَلًا مَا بَعُودَةً فَمَا فَوْقَهَا To give examples of mosquitoes and flies. This doesn't bother Allah. This doesn't put Allah to shame. Allah doesn't feel embarrassed about such things because and this is what we need to make us realize, to make us understand. I don't know many of you, how many of you have children, mashallah. And when you talk to children, then many a times you need to talk to them at their level. Talk like them, behave like them as well. But you won't be seen dead talking like that in front of your boss or your other colleagues. They say, what, what an idiot. <laughs> Astaghfirullah, whatever. But when you're at home, mashallah, with your own son or daughter or nephew or niece, then, mash, then many a times you come down at their level to make them understand and to make them feel at home, to make them feel wanted and loved. Allah doesn't need to come down at our level. Our Christians believe that, Jesus, that God took on the form of Jesus in human form to come and live and dwell amongst the people so that God can appreciate uh, at first hand what it feels like to be human. Allah doesn't need to do that. Allah knows how humans feel. Uh, but Allah knows we need examples. So Allah has revealed many examples for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam of previous prophets. Example of Nuh alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, Yunus alayhi salam and other prophets. Uh, so that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, what he was going through in Makkah, he would realize, I'm not the only one going through with this. Other prophets before me have gone through a similar situation. So Allah 
every now and then will narrate to Rasulullah what happened before. Uh, many, sometimes just small points from here and there, especially the story of Musa salam, has been narrated ex- ex- extensively in the Quran over and over again. But there is one story and only one story Allah has revealed uh, as a story in one go, in sequence, in order. And what a story that is as well. Allah says, let me tell you, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ The best of the stories. And if you read about it and you hear it, it's such a moving story. And it's not just a story that we hear and then we get over it. Wow, it's a nice story. Uh, Allah says the whole purpose, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ By telling you this story, uh, there, are there are many lessons in this. For people who have any, who have some sense, who have some understanding. It's not a made up fairy tale, it's a reality. It's a, it's a reality what really actually happened with Yusuf salam and his brothers. Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي يُوسُفَ وَإِخْوَتِهِ آيَاتٌ لِلسَّائِلِينَ Yusuf within his brothers. And it's a long story and to just narrate it even just literally would require a number of sessions. In fact, many ulama have, they make a point of giving regular dars explanations of Surah Yusuf and it takes many, 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 many sessions into many weeks and sometimes months even. And mashallah, you know, to really do justice to the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. Uh, but very briefly, inshallah, uh, we want to share with our, amongst ourselves uh, some of the main lessons. Many lessons in this surah, uh, in the character of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Initially as a boy, as a young boy growing up in Canaan, uh, in ancient, in, in old time, what we now know as Palestine or Israel, and my village. And my Shaykh Rahimahullah used to say that all prophets previously were sent in villages. Allah mentions in the final ruku of Surah Yusuf, Afalam Yasiru Fidardi Fuyanzuru. Allah says, Wamar Salna min Kablika illa rijal and Nuhi ilayim min ahlil Qura. All previous prophets were sent in villages. And in villages, people have a, live a simple life, and people are hard working, they are caring. Uh, whereas in towns and cities, generally people are selfish, they don't know what, who even lives next door. And they are so much caught in that rat, ra- rat race and uh, just working hand to mouth continuously. Uh, no sympathy and care in the world for anybody else but themselves. And, and many a times they are lazy people. And because they, they get everything, you know, just around the corner. But in villages, people are hard working and they used to be at least. Uh, until 40, 50 years ago, mashallah. But now even in villages, lives are changing. But class historically, people in villages were hard-working people. It was like a large, big community. Everybody knew each other, they cared for each other. And, and they were, mashallah, they supported each other. Hard-working people, and that's what you need. Unlike modern society, Allahu Akbar, lazy, extravagant. Uh, Lazy, extravagant society. People are, are, you know, they're just not bothered unless everything is easy. Uh, Yusuf alayhi salam growing up in a village, mashallah, living with his brothers, how the brothers dealt with him, his relationship with his father, Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam. And then the, when the brothers turned against him, uh, seeing how the father was treating him, and they became jealous, then they start, decided to get rid of him. And there was Yusuf then taken away and sold in Egypt and then bought by the Aziz of Misr and then enslaved in a way, not, not like the bad time slavery, but nevertheless Yusuf, slavery is slavery. Uh, and then mashallah Yusuf salam growing up to become a nice handsome teenager, Allahu Akbar. And then the wife of the Aziz of Misr having a crush on him, falling in love with him. And there is Yusuf in that very subtle, delicate, dangerous situation. But mashallah, as a young teenager, like many, many, many teenagers would envy such a situation and look up and dream about. But there was Yusuf in that situation. And he doesn't 
let go of himself. He keeps himself uh, on the straight and narrow. And then Allahu Akbar, as a result, he ends up in the prison. And that's such a situation. And Yusuf Islam's character in the prison. And then mashallah, all of a sudden, then the tables turn. And Yusuf Islam finds himself now, mashallah, right on top of the ladder. Like the right hand man of the king of Egypt. And then he's got everything at his disposal. And Yusuf salam, Allahu Akbar, he still remembers the old times. And he keeps himself on the straight and narrow. And then many things happen in between. And then the brothers who had plotted uh, to, to have him taken away from his family, young boy, uh, deprived of the love of his family, mother and father, and then sent away to a foreign land, all of a sudden finds himself in a situation where the culprits or the criminals who put him in through this situation are standing in front of him and he can deal with them as he pleases. Uh, but he doesn't. Uh, he shows sympathy. He shows, he shows mercy and he deals with them. Allahu Akbar. And then his family are reunited with him. And Allahu Akbar. Then Yusuf Islam's final days, his supplications, uh, his du'as to Allah. And in spite of having power, what he can do, but he doesn't. So every turn, at every stage, there is a lesson for us, for every one of us. And in the beginning, it all starts with a dream. Most good things in life start with a dream. Many people are dreamers. But that's all they do. <laughs> they just dream and wish everything would just fall into place. Sometimes a dream is a good catalyst. Uh, it's a good spark to get things going. But we're not living in a dreamland. We're not living in cuckoo land. We're living in a real world. Uh, many people dream about all sorts of things. And mashallah, you know, Maulana, you know, I saw this dream. I really need to know what it means. Uh, Allahu Akbar. Uh, brothers, you, if you don't know what it means, doesn't matter. No problem. If Allah is going to show you something, if Allah intended to show you something and something was nice happened to you, don't worry. Just because you can't interpret the dream, uh, it doesn't mean uh, you know, the goodness will stay away. You'll get it at the end, inshallah, anyway. And if it's something bad is to happen to you, uh, because of that dream, uh, just because you know what it means, you think you're going to be able to save yourself? Or uh, you won't. Uh, it's nice to know, but sometimes it's better not to know, so that you can carry on. Otherwise, if people know something, and then sometimes they can be put off the track. Uh, but dreams nevertheless are, are, are dreams. And dreams sometimes are from shaitan, to confuse people, to mislead people, and to make people afraid. And uh, such dreams have no meanings, they're just from shaitan. Sometimes uh, they're on your emotions. What you want to see, what you want to be, then the nafs gets the better of you and you see that in a dream. Sometimes they are from Allah, they are a sign. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Inna nubuwata wa risalata qad in qata'at. And nubuwata and risalat has come to an end. There'll be no more Prophet, no more Nabi. Mirza Qadiani tried his best, <laughs> but he wasn't going to get away with it. The ulama didn't let him get away with it. Uh, but the Prophet said, Risalat and Nubuwat has come to an end. Wala yabqa min an Nubuwat illa al Mubashirat. The only thing which remains from the line of prophethood are good dreams. One good dream, which is from Allah, is 146th or 140th in another narration of Nubuwat. That doesn't mean if you see 40 nice dreams now you become a Nabi. <laughs> no, whatever you see is a small portion from the blessings which Allah used to bestow upon prophets. Uh, it's like if the water down is 40 feet, and if you dig 40 different places, one, one foot, that doesn't mean you're going to get any water. Uh, Nubuwat is, mashallah, one great, wonderful blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can become anything. A sheikh, half is mufti, but what you can't become is a nabi. Allah chooses who to make, who to make a, a nabi. Yusuf alayhi salam had this dream. I saw 11 stars, the sun and the moon bowing down to me. And he said, إِذْ قَالَ لِيَبِيَابَةِ إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ عَشَرَ كَوْكَبًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ رَأَيْتُهُمْ لِي سَاجِدِينَ Oh Father, I had a strange dream last night. I saw 11 stars, the sun and the moon bowing down to me. Yaqub was a Nabi and he realized immediately what the dream meant. 
Yusuf Islam was only a boy, uh, only a child, uh, and Yaqub Islam, Yaqub Islam, what a man he was, and his son Yusuf Islam, what a well, what a man Yusuf was going to turn out to be as well. Such a noble family. Uh, his father was a Nabi, his grandfather was a Nabi, his great grandfather was Ibrahim Khalilullah alayhi salatu wa taslim. Uh, running in the family, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he said, if merely being from a noble family was enough, then there is no one more noble than Yusuf, himself a Nabi, son of a Nabi, grandson of a Nabi, great grandson of a Nabi. Father Nabi, grandfather Nabi, great grandfather Ibrahim Khalilullah alayhi salatu was salam. What more nobility can you have than that? Uh, but Allahu Akbar. Anyway, Yusuf alayhi salam, when he had, when he narrated his dream, his father realized uh, that Yusuf uh, is going to be someone very special. And he said, Oh son, don't tell your dream to anybody, especially your brothers. لا تقصص رؤياك على إخوتك فيكيدوا لك كيدا. Don't tell your dream to your brothers, because otherwise they'll try and harm you. Sometimes people, you know, they feel something good, when people are jealous. And it's usually your close relatives who are jealous. Close friends are jealous. And your brothers and sisters can be jealous. Your uncles and aunts and aunties, people close to you. If somebody else, and they, someone you've never met in your life, why should he be jealous? He doesn't even know you, so why should he be jealous? So jealousy and hatred uh, is, the, is more strong and the strongest in the people closest to you. Uh, so people have to be careful and to save yourself from jealousy. Allahu Akbar is a command of Allah. Allah has, Allah has revealed special parts of Quran, special surah commanding Muslims and believers to seek Allah's refuge uh, from the evil of jealous people. And uh, وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ Jealous people are so evil. And when they come to jealousy, Allah has mentioned jealousy along with black magic and jinns. And this is what kept the Jews from believing in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa They used to recognize Rasulullah and know him. They used to recognize Rasulullah like they would recognize their own children. But they were hasadam min indi anfusihim. Because of jealousy, they couldn't accept Rasulullah. And many a times the, the brothers, they know he's our brother. What, what harm can he do to us? But they're jealous. They're jealous of the way the father treats another brother or sister. They're jealous of the way. Why is he passing his exams all the time? Getting A stars and there's me just struggling barely. Uh, so brothers become jealous. Ma, you know, uncles and aunts become jealous. You know, your, your cousin... You are their nephew, but because their own sons and daughters are struggling, they see you passing, mashallah, get an A-star certificate, admission, nice place, nice job. They become jealous. Uh, so jealousy is such an evil. The Prophet said, Iyakum wal hasad. Uh, people that you are jealous about, they suffer, but the jealous man, he himself, he suffers severely. All his good deeds get, get burnt away. He doesn't get any reward for them whatsoever. إِنَّ الْحَسَدَ يَأْكُلُ الْحَسَنَاتِ كَمَا تَأْكُلُ النَّارَ الْحَطَبِ Jealousy eats away good deeds like fire eats away dry wood. And the Prophet has forbidden Muslims from being jealous. If someone has been blessed with something, don't be jealous. You know what jealousy means? And jealousy means if you see something with something nice, then you wish, man, I hope he loses it. Someone, your brother or your cousin or someone's bought a nice car and mashallah, he brings it around and then a jealous man will go, oh man, I hope he's driving to help you as a bad accident. Allah forbid, you know, master, this is jealousy. Whether you get it or not, that's irrelevant. But you don't want him to have it. And that's jealousy. If you see someone with something nice, a Muslim is not even allowed to wish that Allah give him something. Allah has forbidden that in the Quran. Allah says, if you see another Muslim with something good, وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوْ مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضِ If you see someone with something nice, nice car, nice job, nice house, nice wife, mashallah, just go, don't be jealous. And not just you be jealous. I hope their family, their marriage doesn't work out, you know. Two weeks down the road, man, I hope they separate or something. Don't think like that. 
And don't even wish, if someone's got a nice car, nice BMW convertible, it's still winter, but some, some are coming up soon. <laughs> MashaAllah. Don't wish, oh, if I wish I had one like that as well. No, you don't know. It might be good for him, it might not be good for you. Uh, so just because he's got it, he can digest it. It doesn't mean you can handle it. Uh, so ask Allah for whatever is good for you. وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوْ مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ لِلْرِجَالِ نَصِيبٌ مِّمَّا اكْتَسَبُوا وَلِلنِّسَاءِ نَصِيبٌ مِّمَّا اكْتَسَبًا وَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Ask Allah from His mercy for what's right and good for you. Anyway, coming back to Yusuf a.s. Uh, he, when he narrated his dream, father said, son, don't. I think, وَكَذَلِكَ يَجْتَ بِيكَ رَبُّكَ وَيُعَلِّمُكَ مِنْ تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ I think Allah is going to choose you, bless you, uh, bestow His favors upon you. Uh, so that you can continue the legacy. وَكَذَلِكَ يَجْتَ بِيكَ رَبُّكَ وَيُعَلِّمُكَ مِنْ تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ Allah will teach you the special knowledge of interpretation of dreams. وَيُتِمُّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكَ وَعَلَىٰ آلِ يَعْقُوبِ Allah will complete His favors upon you, the favors which have been passing down the line. Uh, from Ibrahim alayhi salam in Ali Yaqub, Kama atammaha ala abawayka min qablu Ibrahim wa Ishaq. Just as Allah favored Ibrahim and Ishaq alayhi salatu wa salam. So don't tell your brothers. Allah will teach you special knowledge, interpretation of dreams. Everybody can't interpret dreams properly. Sometimes you see a serious dream and you get shaken back. But it's a nice dream. Uh, it's in mashallah. Somebody came to more than Ashraf Ali Thanwi rahmatullah alayhi. And again, he was one of the grandest scholars of recent times. Someone came to him, Hazrat, I saw a dream last night. I was urinating in the masjid. And he said it so shamefully, you know, urinating in the masjid. I was in the mihrab and I was urinating right in front. Hazrat said, MashaAllah, nice dream, man. <laughs> because Hazrat, I'm sweating, feeling even embarrassed, telling you and you telling me it's a nice dream. He said, yeah, very nice dream. Allah will bless you with a son, he'll be an imam. <laughs> there was another a very famous lady, there was a very pious king after the Khulfa Rashidun. His name was Harun Rashid. He was a great worshipper, very knowledgeable, very pious man as well. His wife's name was Zubaydah. She had a dream and when she woke up from the dream, she was sweating like no man's business. And she felt so embarrassed and she saw a dream and she sent her maidservant to go one of the sh and ask one of the shuyukhs in Baghdad what the dream meant. And the dream was she saw that the whole world was making zina with her. And she just felt so embarrassed and she said, go ask this man, that, but don't tell him I saw the dream. <laughs> These things things that the queen seen such a bad dream. And so she, she sent a maidservant to ask one of the shu what the dream meant. And she, she said, don't tell her I saw the dream, just say you saw the dream. <laughs> <laughs> so she went up to the, the sheikh and the sheikh looked at her and said, go away. Who's seen this dream? She goes, me, go away, moving like you can't see this dream. So she came back and she said, well he sussed me out straight away. He said, I can't see a dream like that. Or I tell him quietly, I saw the dream. Or she went and she said, yeah, Zubaydah. Harun Rashid's wife seen this dream, yeah. He goes, yeah, yeah. Such a woman can. Tell her it means Allah will enable her to do something so good, the whole world will enjoy the, the fruits of what she does. And then she Allah blessed her and she was able to build a canal and mashallah which brought water right into Makkah to Mukarramah. Birds and animals and people, they all would benefit and give du'as to Zubeda. This was known as the stream of Zubeda. So what people see in a dream, dreams are very complicated. Allahu Akbar. I don't want to keep you here till midnight. <laughs> if we haven't just started. <laughs> like I said, you know, talk about Yusuf alayhi salam, you need weeks and weeks. Uh, and then mashallah, Yusuf alayhi salam grows up and then his, his then Yusuf, then his father Yaqub alayhi salam realized that Yusuf, he will become the successor to the legacy of Ibrahim and Ishaq and myself. So he would give him special attention. And Yusuf salam was an ordinary boy as well, mashallah. In many families you have a nice, cute little kid. Everybody loves him or her to bits. They want to pick him up and hug him and, and whatever. And Yusuf salam was an absolute exception. A very unique child. Rasulullah said, All the beauty Allah has placed in this world, Allah gave half to just Yusuf. 
So you can imagine what a gorgeous, what a cute, cute, I don't think you can describe Yusuf in any way. Allahu Akbar, such good looking, handsome, so attractive and people would just be taken back and Yusuf salam, and then being the son of a prophet and then Yaqub salam, realizing as well as the looks as they say, you're not just a pretty face, <laughs> mashallah, not just the looks. Now there was so much to happen to Yusuf and Yaqub salam, would give him all his attention that he deserved. So naturally the brothers started becoming jealous. And as people say, you know, he's lost the plot. <laughs> they said, Inna abana lafi dalalim mubeen. They said, our father is not fair. Dad, you're not fair, man. <laughs> uh, he's not fair. He's lost the plot. He's, he's lost it all. Uh, and Allah says, no, no, Yaqub alayhi salam. He was just trying to give the attention that Yusuf alayhi salam deserved. And then the brothers became so jealous, so jealous, they had a meeting. Kept Yusuf out of it. All the rest of them got together and they said, right, there's only one way. Dad, father is not fair, he's lost the plot. Inna abana lafi dalalim mubeen, doesn't treat us fairly. And parents should treat their children fairly. And it doesn't mean that Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam wasn't giving the other sons because father ought to be just and eat, you know. And fair with his children. So we can't say Yaqub alayhi salam wasn't fair. But the one, sometimes the other person is being fair but the person don't, doesn't see the fairness and the honesty. Uh, they don't perceive the, the justice. And so they felt, they felt that they were being mistreated or left out. So they said, okay, let's just get rid of Yusuf. Uqtulu Yusuf. Get rid of Yusuf, dump him somewhere else. Don't worry, we'll repent afterwards. And uh, this is what a lot of the youngsters, they say, man, it's all right, don't worry, man, it's all right, we'll take it. When I get a bit older, <laughs> then I'll sort myself out. But the consequences of doing something wrong, evil, inappropriate, then they, then they set in as well. And uh, this is what shaitan teaches. Now you young man, oh, come on, Mawlana, I'm only young. <laughs> Now what do you expect me to do, man? It's not easy being a Muslim. Whoever said it's easy being a Muslim anywhere? You think you can claim to be a Muslim and you'll just be let away? Uh, no, you won't be let off. You'll definitely be tested. Uh, you think you can claim to be a Muslim and every time you walk down the road, somebody will lay a red carpet for you? Uh, it doesn't happen that way. MashaAllah, as soon as you enroll in Oxford, Cambridge, that's it, the work starts. Then your assignments and essays and theses or whatever. Uh, you think it's just easy getting a degree? You think it's easy having a degree of Iman? You think it's, you're going to get Jannat for nothing? As soon as you read La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah or you spend your first chilla or three days and you think MashaAllah, everybody's going to start treating you nicely. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave his first public sermon, you know what happened? MashaAllah, the heavens didn't open up and the earth didn't give up its treasures. Uh, Rasulullah's two daughters were engaged to be married to two sons of Abu Lahab. And the moment he gave his first sermon, uh, Abu Lahab, uh, he came on the Prophet's case. Is this why you've gathered us to tell us you're a Prophet of Allah? Allah revealed condemning him and his wife. So Abu Lahab went home and said to two of his sons who were engaged to be married to the two daughters of Rasulullah. Ruqayya and Umm Kulthum, he said, well if you my sons call off your, your marriage with the daughters of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the first sermon of Rasulullah, two of his daughters who were sorted, supposed to be married, and their engagement broke off. And then everybody turned against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. So the brothers had a plot, let's get rid of Yusuf. And they said, okay, let's just kill him. But one of them, qala qailum minhum, one of the elder ones, the sensible one, he said, no, 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 don't, get, don't kill Yusuf. La taqtulu Yusuf wa alquhu fi ghayabatil jub. You want to get rid of him, just get him out of sight. And they say, out of, out of sight, out of mind, get just rid of him. Let's just dump him in a well somewhere. Old, deserted well. Somebody, somebody will come along, take him away to another foreign land. Uh, you just want to get him out of your sight, out of your way. 
that will do the job. So they agreed. And how were they going to get Yusuf to dump him in a well? Because Yaqub salam used to take good care. Never let him out of his sight. He knew Yusuf salam is special and he needs to hang about with me, learn from me and then so that it will flow down, pass down to him. And a few days earlier, Allah showed Yusuf, Yaqub salam this dream that some of us have stated uh, that Yusuf was out in the jungle and he was attacked by a wolf. And so that dream was still fresh in his mind as well. So the brothers, they came up with a plan. Father, you know what? Yusuf's our brother. Look at him. He's so good. You're spoiling him. He needs to grow up. He needs to get out and about. He's becoming lazy. He needs to get out and about, come into the jungle, run around, you know, grow up, become strong. He needs some exercise. And so brothers, you know, father, send him, you know, we'll take good care of him. And أَرْسِلْهُ مَا أَنَا غَذَيْنْ يَرْتَى وَيَلَابُ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ Don't worry, he's our brother as well, you know. We'll take good care of him. And Yaqub a.s. said, No, no, no. I am afraid. وَأَخَافُ أَنْ يَأْكُلَهُ ذِئْبُ وَأَنْتُمْ عَنْهُ غَافِلُونَ I'm afraid if you take him with you, then you'll just leave him somewhere and a wolf might come and eat him up. Something nasty might happen. <laughs> Dad, don't you trust us? He's our brother. لَإِنَكَ لَوْ ذِئْبُ وَنَحْنُ عُسْبَةٌ إِنَّا إِذَا لَخَاسِرُونَ If a wolf came and ate him up, <laughs> what, what are we there for? So you can trust us, don't worry, we'll take good care of him. And they said they twisted his arm, Yaqub alayhi salam, as they, as they say, and mashallah persuaded him to allow them to be sent with them to go out and play. But they had another plan altogether. They wanted to do something nasty to Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam and dump him in a well as they had agreed. So before they were going to do that, they stripped him. Uh, he was just a small little boy and they dumped him in the well. They got one of the sheep, slaughtered and put some blood on the cloth, on his clothes. And they just dumped him in the well and that day they took it easy. They didn't come home on time as they used to. Uh, really late. All crying and weeping and all full of sorrow. And they said, Father, you know, something nasty has happened. And just as you were afraid, there was a wolf. He came when he, we went out to do some hunting, whatever we needed. And we left Yusuf to look after our stuff. And when we came back to our utter shock, we couldn't believe our eyes what we were seeing. A wolf had eaten him all up. And look, look at his clothes. False blood. And Yaqub saw the clothes and he realized, this is all he, he realized, if a wolf had eaten Yusuf, his clothes would have been all ripped, torn apart, hardly anything, stains and everything. But mashallah, the clothes were all intact with blood stains. Must have been an educated wolf, Masha, who can strip Yusuf first before eating him up. He didn't want the clothes getting in the way. So Yaqub Islam realized this is all a plot and this is all a plan. But Allahu Akbar, there wasn't much he could do. Allahu Akbar. And then he just left things. And the brothers, Allahu Akbar, they wanted to get rid of Yusuf. But Allah had another plan for Yusuf. Allah wanted to raise him and lift him and mashallah put him somewhere really nice and special. The following morning, uh, they came back because they knew they dumped Yusuf Islam in the well. So they just wanted to see what was happening. They had some sense of guilt and that they done something wrong to Yusuf. And early morning they came and Allah had sent a caravan, people passing by. And they saw a well and they thought there must be some water in the well. So they threw their bucket in the well to get some water out. And there was Yusuf in the well. He clung on, trying to pull, up, pull out the water, but slightly heavier than usual. And when they pulled him up, they couldn't believe their eyes. Wow, such a gorgeous boy. Ya Bushra, hadha ghulam. Such a gorgeous boy. And in the meantime, the brothers of Yusuf salam caught up with them. And they said, oh yeah, this boy... He's us, he's run away, he's a real troublemaker. But you know what, we prepare to make you a deal. If you want to take him away, it doesn't matter, just give us what pennies you have. What little money, whatever you can afford, few pence or whatever, doesn't matter to us. We rose on his case, he's always given us trouble running away. He ran away, that's why he fell in the well. Uh, but it gives us grief, you got to keep up with him. But if you want to take him away, by all means take him away. 
and these travelers they realize the potential and this boy they saying something else but he's so gorgeous he's worth his weight in gold <laughs> and so they bought him Allah says وَشَرَوْهُ بِثَمَنٍ بَخْسٍ دَرَاهِمَ مَعْدُودَةِ وَكَانُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الزَّاهِدِينَ they sold him for pennies the, like in modern terms you wouldn't, even, you wouldn't have been, even to, been able to buy some chewing gum with the money they gave for him uh, but they just got rid of him and then when they took him to Egypt, they were traveling all the way. And then as soon as they reached Egypt, they put him up for sale. And when they put him up for sale, people started, anybody who would go by would be taken back. Here, yeah, um, I'll, I'll buy him. An auction came about. Everybody bidding each other away. Eventually, Mufassirin have stated, Yusuf Islam got sold for his weight in gold. Uh, and the Aziz of Misr, who didn't have any children for himself, when he saw how gorgeous and wonderful Yusuf was, he just couldn't resist. Whatever they wanted, he paid. He paid for his weight in gold. The brothers, not enough, enough money to buy bubble gum or chewing gum, packet of crisps. Uh, but there you are, Allahu Akbar. Allah wanted to show, to show them eventually the real value of Yusuf. How what Yusuf was really worth. They dumped him, got him away. He was living in a village. There he is now, bought by the Aziz of Misr. Uh, the wealthiest man in Egypt. There was Yusuf struggling in the village. Now he's living in a palace. Allahu Akbar. So Allah's wanted to show. Doesn't matter what people want to bring you down. If Allah is on your side, you got no worries. Even the sinister plots will end up in your favor. Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ مَكَّنَّا لِيُوسُفَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلِنُعَلِّمَهُ مِنْ تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ They wanted to kill him, get rid of him. Allah wanted to educate him, bring him up in such a way, and teach him and the running of the affairs of running of the state and so much goodness. Allah says, I wanted to teach Yusuf and bring him up in this. That wasn't possible in the jungle in a village. He needed a center of civilization, somewhere very nice and very good. Uh, so Allah, Allah brought him there. And when the, when the Aziz of Misr brought him, he brought him home. He didn't have any children of his own. And he said to his wife, uh, look at him, he's so gorgeous. We'll, we'll take him to be our son. And as Yusuf salam, mashallah, grew up, um, children, babies are babies, they look cute, mashallah. But when Yusuf salam, became a young man, handsome, and Allahu Akbar, then the wife of the Aziz of Misr couldn't resist him. And every time she would look at him, she would just be taken back. And there came a stage when she could hold back no longer. She tempted Yusuf into the innermost chamber, chamber of secrets. <laughs> Heard a chamber of secrets, <laughs> mashallah, and then locked all the gate, all the doors, and everything, mashallah, and so that Yusuf couldn't run. And then, right in the innermost chamber of secrets, uh, she just put Yusuf, uh, Yusuf, there I am, I'm all yours. Can you imagine that in such a situation? The wife of the Aziz of Misr, but Yusuf, was he tempted? How many people would say, yeah man, <laughs> Allah, but, but not Yusuf Islam. Young man, and there's all the doors are locked. Not a soul inside to see, witness what's going on. Uh, but Allahu Akbar, Yusuf put into that state. Allahu Akbar, and then Yusuf Islam, he wasn't impressed. Kept his gaze down. And some Mufassirin have stated different narrations about how Yusuf salam, Allah saved him. In one narration he says, uh, Allah showed Yusuf salam, his father's appearance. Yusuf, don't you dare. Don't you dare. And Yusuf salam, took hold of himself. In his, in his heart, he got tempted. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ هَمَّتْ بِهِ وَهَمَّ بِهَا uh, Don't think that Yusuf was just an angel. Uh, that he, he's not tempted by women. Allahu Akbar. Many years ago we had a meeting in our masjid uh, and a local priest, vicar of a church, brought down his community. You know, our Christian friends are very crafty as well. <laughs> Masha. They like coming down to masjids, mashallah. There was a there was a Christian priest, he'd served his time in India and trying to preach Christianity amongst the Muslims. Just as we love converting Christians into Muslims, they love doing the other way around as well. One of the hardcore Christians in this country. Uh, have you heard of a chap called Nazir Ali? 
Uh, he's one of the topmost Christians. Topmost muftis of Christians, as it were. You know, mashallah, just as we have Hafiz Saab, Molana Saab, and then we have a mufti Saab, and we have a big mufti, and the Christians have their pastors, then the big ones are bishops, and then the top, mashallah, he's one of the top Christians. Uh, and he wasn't a born Christian as such. His family were Muslims. Then they became Christians. Uh, Bishop, his, his father was a Muslim. Uh, but then he became as such. And then these ones are really dangerous. You get some of the other ones as well. On, if you go into YouTube and you type in Dr. J. Nicholson. And they are the, he, was, he was the senior overseer or the national overseer for Jehovah's Witnesses. You know Jehovah's Witnesses? The Christian version of the Tablighi Jumaat. <laughs> he, 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 was, he, was, he was the English version of Hafiz Patel Sahib. <laughs> and if you see on the you, mashallah, big beard, mashallah. Really looks and wonderful guy, mashallah. And his mother became a Muslim when she was 115. And he became, mashallah, he was the top man, Jehovah's Witnesses. And mashallah, Allah blessed him with Islam as well. He became Muslim, mashallah. Uh, and similarly, I was saying, you know, the Christians tried their luck as well. And Allahu Akbar. But anyway, Yusuf alayhi salam was deep down in there. And, وَلَقَدْ hammat bihi wa biha. She was all for him and he became ready as well. Uh, he wanted as well, but then Allah... Allah gives prophets full control. Uh, not that they are, you know, they don't have emotions. They have emotions as well, but they are fully able to control themselves. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he said on the day of Qiyamah, when there will be no shade other than the shade of the arsh of Allah, Allah will give seven people shade. Imamun Adil, a just ruler, Shabun Nashafi, Ibadatillah, a young man who grows up worshipping Allah, right from when you are young, you all the time, masjid, ibadat, everything good. And then along with others, mashallah, one young man, whom a nice, good woman, not someone on the street, uh, some decent, beautiful woman, young woman, tempts you, and then you say, you don't oblige, yeah, take my number as well. <laughs> and he says, no, no, inni akhafullah, I, I'm afraid of Allah, sorry, you got the wrong guy. Uh, if you can say no, uh, no, then that is something. Everybody can say, yep, yep, I'll see you later down the road. <laughs> no, uh, you say no. Just like Yusuf Islam said no. If you can say no, then that's your ticket for a seat under the arsh of Allah on the day of Qiyamah. Uh, so Yusuf Islam in his youth, I was remember telling you that there are a lot of lessons in there for us. Uh, this is another lesson from Yusuf Islam's his character to learn to say no. In there's nothing to stop him. No one could ever know. No one would ever know from the people. But uh, no one else is watching. But Allah is watching. And he says, "Walaqad hammat bihi wa hamma bihi. He was tempted, uh, but no. He said no. And then she put herself at him at his service. But Yusuf didn't go the other way. He started running towards the door started running and even if you think I'm a dead end no way out and the least you can you do what you can do start running and you see Allah will open sealed locked doors and you think there's no solution uh, that we've got no solutions but Allah has all the solutions we've got all the problems in fact we so full of problem whatever we touch becomes a problem I've yet to see somebody who's come up to me Maulana you know make dua Live in such a nice house, I'm fit and strong. Man. Make do Allah gives me sickness. <laughs> make do Allah gives me, give me illness, I become ill. Have you ever seen anyone make such a dua? <laughs> Malana, I've got a nice job, make do Allah give me the sack. <laughs> Malana, I've got such a nice relationship with my wife and kids. You know, make dua, she runs away. <laughs> no. Have you ever seen anybody make such a dua? No. People will ask you, I've got serious problems at home, Malana. Make dua, please. Allah sought my wife out, my kids out. Uh, everybody's got their own problems. Someone who's got no job, got a problem looking for a job. Someone's got a job, got a problem with the job. Uh, many people got problem looking for a wife. Those who got a wife, got a problem with the wife. <laughs> uh, many people know kids' problem having kids. Those who've got kids' problem with the kids. Uh, in fact, whatever we touch becomes a problem. But Allah has the solution to all the problems. MashaAllah, you see the road is, you know, the, the thing is dead end, but you start doing what you can, then, then you see how Allah takes over. 
Uh, she locked all the gates. وَغَلَّقَتِ الْأَبْوَابِ Allah says the gates were locked. Not just door. Doors. Uh, doors were locked. And, and Yusuf Islam started running. And when he started running, the doors started opening. One by one, one after the other, until the outside gate. As soon as Yusuf Islam got there, Zulekha thought, that, that's my last chance. I've got to stop him now. And then the only way was, Yusuf was almost on the door and she just threw herself at him and, and tried to pull him back. And in the process, his shirt got ripped. Uh, but Yusuf was on the door anyway and he pushed the door and the door opened and there was her husband, the Aziz of Misr, right spur of the moment. And now then she switched, she changed the gear, she did a reverse uh, she put it in reverse. You bought this young man. You thought he was really good. You thought he was going to be good for us. Look, he tried to rape me. And there is Yusuf running. And she's chasing him. And Allahu Akbar. Yusuf just in the middle just started. What's she talking about? Me raping her? Not me, mate. <laughs> You're the wrong guy. MashaAllah. Allah. Wa shahida shahidun min ahliha. A uh, small child. Ulama have stated. MashaAllah. In tafasir. Small child. But it spoke. Look at the circumstantial evidence. You know circumstantial evidence? What's situational? He goes, look, it's straightforward. All you got to do is to look at the shirt. If it's ripped from the front, then she's telling the truth and he's lying. But if it's ripped from the back, then he's right and she's wrong. Because if it's ripped from the front, that means Yusuf was imposing himself. She was struggling. So she tear his shirt from the front. But... If Yusuf is innocent, then he was running and she was chasing. That means he wanted to be safe and she was pulling. When they saw the shirt is ripped from the back, he knew straight away uh, that Yusuf is innocent and she is the guilty one. She couldn't resist. Yusuf was so handsome now, grown up man, mashallah, young man. But the news soon spread. Zulekha is fallen for this slave? But little did they know who Yusuf was. He wasn't just an ordinary young man. He was mashallah, like many young people taken back. Get taken back when they see someone nice, mashallah. Uh, similarly, women have feelings as well. Sometimes they can't resist as well. They get enchanted. Love at first sight. But Yusuf was all around, mashallah. So she couldn't hold herself back. And so it became famous. Zulekha has fallen for Yusuf. But they didn't know who Yusuf was. So Zulekha wanted to show them. <laughs> you telling me, teasing me, let me show you who Yusuf really is. So she held a party. She called everyone around. All her, mate, all her friends. Mashallah, Tupperware party, whatever. <laughs> Got together. <laughs> Laid out the foods, prepared everything, put the fruits out. وَآتَدَتْ لَهُنَّ مُتَّكَأٌ وَآتَتْ كُلَّ وَاحِدَةٍ مِّنْهُنَّ سِكِّينَ She made sure she put food out and proper sharp knives. And she put them all out, laid them everything. Now when they were ready to eat, see he said, Yusuf, come in Yusuf. And Yusuf alayhi salam as he walked in the grand entrance. Wow. As soon as they saw Yusuf, فَلَمَّا رَأَيْنَهُ أَكْبَرْنَهُ وَقَطَّعْنَ أَيْدِيَهُنَّ They were supposed to be eating. She said, alright, can you start please? And they just started with starters. Knives in their hands, whatever oranges, whatever they were trying to cut. And as soon as Yusuf, wow! أَكْبَرْنَ They adored him so much, Allah says, وَقَطَّعْنَ أَيْدِيَهُنَّ And just looking at Yusuf, they were taken so back. They were so spellbound by his looks. They were enchanted. And they just cut their hands. And they said, Ma hasha lillah. Wow. Ma hadha bashara. He's so gorgeous. He's not human. In hadha illa malakun kareem. He's an angel. And they cut their hands. And then Zulekha said, You see, that's Yusuf. Uh, you see, you were blaming me for who Yusuf is. Look what you've done to yourself. Look at yourself. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. And they said, and then she said, وَكَذَلِكَ لُمْ If you were blaming me that I couldn't control myself, look at what you've done to yourself. And anyway, Yusuf, he's not going to get away with it. I'm not going to let him get away with it. 
Uh, if he doesn't listen to what I'm saying, he'll have to pay. But she was trying to force herself onto Yusuf, impose herself. Yusuf alayhi salam, made a dua, Ya Allah, I've had enough of this problem, Ya Allah, please save me. Rabbi sijnu ahabbu ilayya mimma yad'oonani ilay. Ya Allah, please save me from this mess I'm in. Even if it means me going into prison, Ya Allah, I would rather be in prison than to be here. Many people would say, wow, man, I'm in heaven. But Yusuf alayhi salam, no, he saw, he could see this is hell. Living in such fitna. Allahu Akbar. Sometimes you feel, mashallah, many people are happily married in their homes, but we're at workplace, others, they get tempted. And they give in, start coming home late or whatever, and the money is all going elsewhere. And the poor woman, she's mother of his kids, whatever, she's struggling to make ends meet. And this guy is on nice holidays, Dubai. <laughs> He's going on a halal holiday, mashallah, doing haram stuff. Allahu Akbar. Yusuf had every opportunity, but no, no, he would rather be in prison than to be tempted. MashaAllah. Many years, along came other guys, MashaAllah. They had a, when they were in and they saw Yusuf salam in the prison, they had a dream. One guy had a dream that he was, in fact, somebody had tried to poison the king and added poison to the food and got caught. And there were two main suspects. One was the chef and one was the king's personal attendant. <coughs> And they were both in prison until investigations were completed. And they had a dream in the meantime. And one of them saw that he was restored to his job and what, whatever. And the other one, he was hung and there, were bird, there was bread perched on his head. And the birds were, there was bread placed on his head. Birds were coming and eating from there. And, and so they said, you know, we, we think you're a good guy. So we've had these dreams. What do you think these dreams mean? Yusuf alayhi salam said, don't worry, I'll tell you what they mean. Then he told them what the dreams meant. And he said, one of you guys is going to be set free, the other will be dealt with. And the guy Yusuf alayhi salam thought, who was the king's personal attendant, he goes, you know what, I'm in the... many years had passed since Yusuf alayhi salam had been in prison. And now he felt that it would be nice if I could get out as well. And so he put in a word, he said, you know, when you get restored to your job, uh, put in a good word for me with the king that I'm here wrongly, you know, they just put me in prison for nothing. I've done nothing wrong and I'm here for the wrong reason. So put in a word for me that perhaps I can get out. But Allah didn't like Yusuf salam put in, in a word to somebody else rather than Allah. Wasn't fitting for a man of his caliber. So Allah made it. Well, that person forgot. Allah says, "Fansahu shaitan." Shaitan made him forget, and that meant Yusuf al-Islam remained in prison for a long, long more time. Another seven years passed, and he'd been in prison now for many years. Then one, Allah decided enough was enough time for Yusuf now to come out and, mashallah, make let the world know who Yusuf is. Allah showed the king a dream. Allah didn't start from low down, right to the top. Because other things won't, will, they'll just get in the way, get brushed under the carpet. The king, Allah showed him a dream. Allah wanted to make a way for Yusuf. If you think there's nothing happening, and the world is a dead end for you, but if Allah is on your side, Allah will make way for you. The king had a dream, he saw seven fat cows eaten by seven skinny cows. Seven green shoots, seven dry shoots. He was puzzled. He said, in the morning when he put, set his coat up, come on, tell me what the dream means. No, this is just a, this is just inspiration, whispers of the devil and the nafs. There's no real meaning to this, don't worry, just relax, take it easy. But the king wasn't satisfied. His personal attendant who'd been in prison with Yusuf alayhi salam and who'd seen a dream, Yusuf alayhi salam had told him the meaning, struck him. Oh yes, I know a dream teller. Yusuf, he's in the prison. Yeah, I know him. Yusuf, ayyuha siddiq, aftina fi sabi baqarat. Tell us what this dream means. The king's had this dream, he's worried, he wants to know. Yusuf alayhi salam said, no sweat. It means you'll have seven years of good harvest, followed by seven years of dry harvest. Whatever you can harvest on those seven years, uh, store it up in mashallah nice ways, and then you'll be able to use it in the seven years of dry drought. And it will get eaten up by then. The king was really impressed. He goes, yeah, that's it. Bring him to me. This man, I want to see him. I want to meet him. I want to know who he is. 
So he sent a man and he said, Yusuf the king wants to meet you. He goes, no, I'm not going anywhere. I want my old file opened. Uh, there's been gross miscarriage of justice. I want my case sorted first. I want my name cleared. Heard of these things? <laughs> Newspapers. Uh, I, want my, I want my name cleared first. Uh, I want the Aziz, my master, who brought me up, who paid for my weight in gold. I want him to know I didn't betray his trust and I sort of was loyal and faithful. Uh, so that he knows, you know, he can't point any finger at me. No one should be able to point a finger. The character of prophets is so sublime, nobody can point a finger at their character. That's how our character should be. Uh, you don't want to abuse your trust. And if someone you know, gives you a trust responsibility, you want to fulfill your responsibility. Be grateful, appreciate the responsibility you've been given. So the old case was opened and mashallah, new evidence taken into account. And then Yusuf Islam's name was cleared. Then he said, yeah, now I'm coming, now I'll go. And then Yusuf Islam said to the king, don't worry, you put me in charge, I'll help you get, out, get over these seven years. And let there be seven years, a good harvest, and mashallah, grow as much as you can. We'll use up only what we need, we'll keep the rest in the shoots. We'll build mega storage facilities, store up as much as we can. We need for seven years of hardship. And that way, just make me in charge and I'll, I'll help you get through. The king agreed and marshal everything went according to plan. Seven years of harvest, they stocked up, piled up. Then the drought set in. When the drought set in, it spread everywhere beyond Egypt. And Yusuf Islam's family, father, Yaqub Islam, his brothers who were living in a village. No rain, no food, things were very tough. And there was Yusuf Islam now in charge of all Egypt, running of distribution of grain and food. His kindness, generosity, sympathy, his fame spread and even they heard in Egypt there's a good guy, a kind guy, he, he, he looks after people well and he, he, he's got food at his disposal. So they came, the brothers came and when they came and Marsha met up with Yusuf Islam, he looked at them and recognized them straight away. He recognized them, they didn't recognize him. He started asking, where are you from? Brothers, sisters, what's your dad doing? How is he? You family, personal things. They were just thought he's just being nice. But Yusuf salam was taking news. How's mother, father, brothers, mashallah, and everybody else. And he had, Yaqub salam had a number of wives. And the other brothers from, was from the other wives of Yaqub salam. His own mother, he had a younger brother, Bin Yameen. Uh, he, he interrogated them, got all the news out and then he said, next time you come, you make sure you bring your little brother with you as well, otherwise you'll get nothing from me. And he knew that his family were living through tough times and the little money that they had, he put them back in the grain so that when they go back, they know it'll be an incentive for them to come back. So when they, when they, when they went back, they, they reported to Yaqub look father, he was really kind and good and he was so kind to us. He took a personal interest in our affairs. And when they opened their luggage and the grain, they even found their money returned to them. They said, look father, look he's even returned our money. So he's asked us to bring the little, little brother with us next time we go. And mashallah, when they said that, Yaqub old wound just reopened. He just struck him, oh wow, this is what you said to me about Yusuf as well, that you look after him and now you want to do the same thing to this one, I'm not going to send him with you. And they insisted and then you, Yaqub Islam gave in, he said, okay, I'll send him with you providing you give me your word, you will not let him out of your sight and you won't abandon him anywhere. They said, father, definitely this, you can trust us. <laughs> they came and mashallah Yusuf salam, when he met up with his brother he made him realize who he is and he is a brother not to worry about anything and so on and what when he had grain distributed to them and then some of the royal own ornaments were just put in their luggage in the luggage of the younger real brother of Yusuf salam. so when they were leaving to go back home then Yusuf Islam set the alarms off that look, royal, royal, some royal ornaments have been missing. I think those guys must have stolen them. So the guards chased them and caught up with them. And they said, look, you guys, look, you've got no shame. Our master was so kind to you. And look what you've done. The way you've repaid him, you've stolen some of the royal ornaments. 
What us? No, 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 no. We don't come to make trouble. Uh, we are we are peace loving guys. And they said, okay, well, we have to search. And what? Suppose we find the royal ornaments in your luggage. Then, because well, we all brothers have different luggage. And whosever luggage you find your bits, he's your man. You can keep him. So when they started searching, then the ornaments were in the luggage of Yusuf Islam's younger brother. That's the way it was meant to be. And as soon as they realized, they said, yeah, he's a thief, his brother was a thief as well, he's the troublemaker. So yeah, and Allahu Akbar. And then subhanallah, many years had passed, they still hadn't forgotten Yusuf in a bad way. They remembered him as the troublemaker, while it was really Yusuf salam showing them all the kindness. And so they took him back. And the others, they said, oh, no, no. The eldest brother, he said, oh, no. We've given our word to father, we will not let him out of our sight. And now he's a wanted guy, he's been held back. So you go home, tell father that your son has stolen. Their brother, but not their brother, he's saying, you go and tell father, your son has stolen. Inna sarak. Your son has stolen, so I'm staying here, I'll stay with him here until the matters are sorted. So when they came back to use Yaqub salam and they narrated the incident, Yaqub Islam was taken even more back. First Yusuf and now Binyamin. But then Yaqub Islam said, you know what? Go, go back again. Try. Try to rescue him and have him set freed. And look for Yusuf as well. Uh, I see, you know, don't give up hope of Yusuf. Try and look for Yusuf as well. And the brother said, <laughs> Father, you've gone crazy. Yusuf is history. He's, who knows where Yusuf and what happened to Yusuf? But he said, don't worry. La illa. Don't give up hope in the mercy of Allah. You just go and look and search. Leave things to Allah. This time when they came back in a really sad state. Masana wa ahla na dhurru wa jina bi bidati muzjatin faufila na alkaila wa tasaddaq alayna. Look, we've got enough problems of our own. Our fathers, he's so, he's so stricken with grief. Loss of his first son and now this one as well. He just cries 24-7. Please have mercy and let him be and release him. You can do whatever you like. Any one of us, you can keep us. But please let him go. And they narrated the situation in such a way. Yaqub, uh, Yusuf Islam couldn't hold back anymore. And he said, you know what? Do you know what you did to Yusuf? When you didn't know any better the way you treated Yusuf and his brother. And when he said that, it just rung old bells. Yusuf, who do you, how do you know about Yusuf? What does Yusuf mean to you? And then he struck him. Could it be that you are Yusuf? He goes, yeah, I am Yusuf. That's what you thought you'll do with me. You wanted to kill me, dump me in the well. You sold me for peanuts. And look where I am now. This is Allah's father. Innahu man yattaqi wa yasbir. And Yusuf salam said, he who has taqwa and makes sabr, Allah will not waste him. They thought they are doomed. Because what they did to Yusuf, they were expecting the same treatment back from Yusuf. But Yusuf salam said, no, la tathriba alaykum al yawm. Don't worry, no blame will fall on you today. Here, take my shirt. Idhabu bi qamisi hadha, fa'alquuhu ala wajhi abi. Ya'ti basira. Fathers become blind, don't worry. Just take my shirt and put it on the father's head and Allah will restore his sight. And there was Yusuf Islam in a well when he was a little boy, a couple of kilometers down the road. And Yaqub Islam didn't know for sure. But now from Egypt, many hundreds of miles away, the brothers they leave with the shirt of Yusuf salam, and Yaqub Islam with the rest of his family back in Kanaan in a village. He said, you know what? If you don't think I've gone crazy, I'm telling you, I can smell Yusuf today. I inni la ajidu riha Yusuf alawla an tufannidun. If you don't think I've gone crazy, I'm telling you, I smell Yusuf today. And very soon, mashallah, when the brothers arrived and they put his shirt on him, 
Allah gave him sight. And then Yusuf Islam said to them, Bring father, everybody, come here. You know, you don't need to suffer in a village out there, mashallah, like everybody. One father comes here, wife comes over <laughs> from Pakistan, Bangladesh, wherever, <laughs> one by one, the whole clan is over. <laughs> And this is old style, you know, Yusuf alayhi salam, mashallah. He came, settled there, he said, bring them all over down here. And mashallah, when they came down, and everybody heard, Yusuf alayhi salam's families, his mom and dad are coming down. The whole Egypt came out to greet them and salute them and welcome them. The family of Yusuf, mashallah. And they came down, they, the king arranged a special do. A special, mashallah, function, dinner in charge, in, in honor of Yusuf alayhi salam and his family. And then mashallah, when they all came down, you, the, there was Yusuf alayhi salam and everybody bowed down in sajda. And Yusuf alayhi salam put his father up on the mashallah, on the throne next to Rafa al arsh wa kharru law sujjada. And then Yusuf alayhi salam said, you know father, remember when I was a little boy back in hometown and I saw that dream. Eleven stars, sun and the moon were bowing down to me. That's, you know, look how Allah has made it come true today. مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ نَزَغَ الشَّيْطَانُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ إِخْوَتِي After shaitan caused my brothers to do what they did with me. You know, look, if Yusuf wanted, he could have, mashallah, he could have prepared a whole list. You know, when there's a problem, and somebody is trying to reconcile. No, look, he said this and did she, she said that and that's what they did and they called me this and they did this. No man, just let it go. Forget about it. The way Yusuf Islam forgot about it. And he you know, put the blame not on the brothers. There was the brothers who dumped him and made a plan. But Yusuf Islam said, مِن بَعْدِ أَنْ نَزَغَ الشَّيْطَانُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ إِخْوَتِي They did what they did under the influence of shaitan. Shaitan made them do all this, you know, they want so bad. Otherwise on their own they wouldn't have done this. Uh, he just forgot about it and mashallah cleared the brothers, cleared their name and mashallah showed all the kindness that he could. And then Allah says, when it all happened, everything was now sorted, families come, he is now, mashallah, relieved to be with his family. Aziz of Misr in the meantime died and passed away. Zulekha came into the marriage of Yusuf alayhi salam as well. And then Yusuf alayhi salam finally, Allah says he would make dua to Allah. Rabbi qad ataytani min al mulk. Ya Allah, you gave me all this. Whatever I have and acquired is your blessing. Wa'allamtani min ta'wil al ahadith. Ya Allah, you are the one who taught me this knowledge of the interpretation of dreams. Fatir as samawati wal ard. Ya Allah, you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. Anta waliyi fi dunya wal akhirah. You are my real friend in this world and the life hereafter. Ya Allah, tawaffani musliman wa alihiqni bis salihin. Ya Allah, one final request. You've given me everything I've ever owned and had. It's all been from you. Ya Allah, one final request. Ya Allah, when I die, I want to die like a Muslim. I want to die like a Muslim. Then I want to rise like Muslim with your pious servants on the day of Qiyamat, Ya Allah. Yusuf, who are you? Prophet, son of a prophet, grandson of a prophet, great grandson of a prophet. It runs in the genes, mashallah. Uh, you know, they say it runs in the family. Uh, he was built in this way, mashallah. But look how humble Yusuf is, alayhi salam. He's praying to Allah, Ya Allah, I can't do it without you giving me that guidance. And Ya Allah, unless you save me and protect me and guide me, I can't. I, even I can't die like a Muslim. Uh, so lesson, you know, don't be too... Don't be too sure of yourself. You might be whatever, uh, but Allah But even the best and the greatest used to fear for themselves and tremble. If only we can die like a Muslim. Uh, and the Prophet wasallam in one hadith said, "Is how you live is how you'll die. How you die is how you'll be raised on the day of Qiyamat. You want to pray to Allah that you live like a Muslim and die like a Muslim. Be humble. Uh, humbleness. Allah says, ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الْغَيْبِ نُوحِيهِ إِلَيْكَ uh, this is my revelation, I'm telling you, my beloved Prophet. Uh, in the story of Yusuf, it's not just a story, it's a reality. When Allah is on your side, it doesn't matter what other people... You know, we love blaming others. America, UN, you know, blame yourselves, boys. MashaAllah, you know, learn to sort out your relationship with Allah. If Allah is on your side, the world can be against you, they can't do anything. Uh, when you get an opportunity, show your steel. Uh, show what you made of. Don't just give in. 
Mashallah, don't just go down the street and are looking for opportunities. When you get an opportunity, be it a job or whatever, you know it's a haram job. Uh, doing mashallah, whatever. Uh, you want to be content and satisfied with the little, even though it's, you know, it's halal, even though it may be little. Uh, learn to say no to the wrong things. And uh, when you get an opportunity to seek revenge, learn to forgive as well. I learn to show kindness and forgiveness. May Allah guide us all to the right path. May Allah have mercy upon us. May Allah enable us to live like Muslims and die like Muslims and rise like Muslims.